You are watching episode 5 of Befriending the Internet, the show where I answer questions from viewers and uh, in fucking absurd depth. The show that I have, uh, you know, attempted to answer this first question I'm going to do before, I rambled for half an hour and then realized I was not recording. So, uh, I probably won't go on for as long as I did that time, but I am still interested in answering the question. It's been a day since my last attempt, so we'll give it a go. This is from Lazy Ace Dia. I'm curious how your transition will affect your wardrobe. It seems to me that your clusterpunk style was created as a defense mechanism or a good way to cope with a poor self-image. I'm not ugly, I'm just not trying to look good. Now that you're being more honest with yourself, how will that honesty be reflected in your clothing? Will you go for a highly feminized look, goth lolly, okasan core, or will changes be more subtle? And while you're on the topic, could you talk about your history with fashion, what it meant to you in the past, and what it means today? So, the long story short of my fashion sense pretty much up until high school is that I had no fucking idea. I did not understand anything about fashion. I didn't understand my clothes. People constantly told me that my clothes did not match. I would come downstairs wearing clothes and my parents would be like, your clothes don't match. And I'd be like, what does that mean? And like kids at school would tell me my clothes don't match. I literally just didn't understand like what it means for clothes to match until finally at some point somebody told me like, well, it means that like they are the same color or that like, and so I was like, oh, like this was in like middle school, I think when finally I understood at least that clothes have to be the same color and that's what makes them match, you know, but like. When I was growing up, I just wore shirts of whatever I liked, you know, like pictures of things I like. So the first shirts I really remember having picked out uh, were like, you know, my, my mom would take me to Old Navy or The Gap, like, you know, any whatever kind of like inexpensive family clothes stores at the mall. And, um, you know, uh, I would get like just Pokemon t-shirts and track pants. Like I hated jeans as a kid. Never wore them. I never did any sports. I never played outside. I never understood that jeans like were a utility thing. For me, all that mattered was comfort. I was not going to wear anything I found uncomfortable. So like I hated jeans. I'm sure I wore them sometimes as a kid. But, uh, you know, eventually I was pretty much just wearing track pants uh, or like um, shorts. And so, uh, you know, I want to say that in high school when it, basically when i went through my growth spurt it just so happened that my family like was poor at the time when i turned 14 and so like right as i was going into needing new clothes we could not afford to get any new clothes so instead i mostly started wearing my dad's clothes because we were about the same size so uh, he, you know, had a whole lot of sweatpants and shit, which I thought were comfortable. So I started wearing my dad's sweatpants and most of my t-shirts were like, uh, my whole life I, I would wear comically oversized t-shirts. Like I would get like double XL shirts and I just like to swim in my shirts. Like, you know, me who's like the smallest, shrimpiest kid imaginable, wearing a double XL literally looks like I am wearing a dress, ironically enough. Uh, but yeah, I always liked open flowy clothes. Like I like, you know, I liked stuff that was baggy and didn't touch my body too much. Cause I just felt uncomfortable feeling the clothes on my body. Like I felt more comfortable if I, if I feel as, as little like touch with the clothes as possible. So, um, you know, at some point I started wearing pajama pants as well as, uh, uh, of, uh, fucking sweatpants i don't remember how i got like my first pair or anything like that but at some point my mom started just buying me pajama pants that she would find um like the dr pepper ones and stuff like that and so i started wearing pajama pants sweatpants and you know just band t-shirts or character shirts throughout most of high school lots of anime shirts stuff like that um stuff i'd bought at conventions or at hot topic for the most part so like uh you know, like my um my my wardrobe was pretty static through late high school 
and uh, and early college or you know all of college because I was only there for like a year. But like, um, when when I like started uh, like at, at first I was wearing like all black shirts basically in 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 early high school. Then I got really into wearing like all white or all red because. You know, initially I was all black because it was just like, I don't want to talk to anybody or fuck with anybody. But then I decided I wanted to have like a more like, you know, like just like pure persona, like something like, oh, I'm, I'm trying to be like upbeat and happy. I realized that, you know, saying I wanted to be white and therefore pure is really funny. But like it was more the approach of like Andrew WK who wears like white shirt and white jeans. And it's almost like he wants to be projected onto. Like he is this blank slate onto which, you know, whatever happens that day can be, you know, can appear. I guess that that like nature of it is what I liked about it. It's like I didn't feel like you know, I felt like, I guess, in order for me to not be abrasive and pushing people away, I needed to view myself as just, like, a saintly figure who is just going to let everything pass, you know? And so, like, I am the clean slate. Um, but, like, in um, college, you know, again, I started wearing a lot of red because I wanted to reincorporate the idea that, like, I did have some kind of passion or... Uh, like personal identity but then I ended up sliding back to white for a while and then uh, like once I like when Victor started developing his own style it was because he started to realize that like oh the reason that like we don't like fitting shirts is because we always wore like cheap gildan shirts and band shirts and all this stuff that just feels like shit if you get it at regular size and you know has bad cuts so when he realized that like if you actually wear like nice clothes like shirts that come from like you know stores and uh like other than hot topic and you know, have softer fabrics and stuff, then, um, you know, they are comfortable. So once he made that discovery for me, I started wearing shirts that fit that were and just making sure that every shirt I bought was like good fabric, nothing cheap and shitty, no gildan, you know, um, and that repaired my relationship with t-shirts in a way where I started buying lots of shirts again. But like, it was also partly because when I became a YouTuber, it was very easy to justify shirts as a purchase because it's both a tax write-off and, like, you know, a prop that I can use in the videos that, like, also signals the kind of shows I'm a fan of. And I try to get, like, the most out there, unique shirts that, like, nobody else has that, you know, that represent my taste most accurately, you know. So, like, yeah, it's a lot of fun to to buy cool anime shirts but like yeah i mean you're pretty on point that like that basic element of my aesthetic like you know the whole cluster punk thing of me like wearing ridiculous outfits i mean there was a time where i would go out wearing a robe a lot or like a robe and a jacket on top of each other and just looking like very disheveled like cluster punk as a deliberate aesthetic of clashing like a bunch of crazy shit together and making it look cool is something that i do for videos or you know pictures like i don't just dress cluster punk and go out amid the streets you know for the most part i wear very casual attire i wear like pajama pajama pants pajama shorts and uh anime or band shirts so as a woman my options are vastly larger and I definitely had a lot of insecurity over like the fact that you know not only just not not just like being overweight but also like just you know not truly believing that I could like pass as a woman had held me back for a long time even though like I, I guess I just was like I was thinking about women's fashion through the narrow lens of how it appears on like anime characters and Korean models, you know, where like it's they they're able to wear a lot of very simple clothes because of the fact that uh, if you have a nice body or even just if you're very thin, then it's kind of like everything looks good on you. Like you don't have to complicate it with any amounts of, you know, uh, layering or um you know or or like frills or anything that like is meant to distract from your body you are in fact trying to draw attention to your body because your body is what is appealing you know but i even if i had a nice body 
I don't know if I would want to wear clothes that were like revealing or that, you know, showed off my body. Like I am fairly like, you know, I'm not very like sexually open, even though I will talk about sex that I've had and I will, you know, joke about sex or, or talk about how often I have sex. I do not like engage sexually with people outside the context of, you know, my relationship. Uh, I am in a committed relationship, you know? So like, and, and I don't feel comfortable like going beyond that or, or like talking about things more so than I have before, you know? But like, so I can't imagine myself like getting really, like let's say I got super thin and you know um and had like a nice body like i mean sure maybe i would wear something more revealing if i was going to the beach or you know in a context where like okay i want to look like you know not necessarily sexy but like cute in a in a way that you know that isn't when you're wearing more clothes i guess but like you know as a as a as a somebody who's out and about just like in town you know, I don't want people to look at me as sexually attractive. Like, uh, I know what it feels like to view people as sexually attractive, and I don't want to be viewed that way. You know, like, I, uh, I understand that there are people who do, and it's it's kind of baffling to me that there are people who you know like don't want to be seen as sexy, um, but you know, like, do dress in a way that, like, seems to only suggest that, you know, but, like, I guess outfits can mean lots of different things to different people, and you shouldn't just make assumptions about, like, what somebody is trying to say with their outfit, but, um, you know, I, I guess it's also a matter of, like, self-awareness about, like, um, you know, what the people around you are thinking and, uh, you know, like whether it is right or not for them to think that way, just the acknowledgement that people do, you know? And so for me, it's like, that's what makes me uncomfortable is the knowledge that like, you know, people are deaf. Like if I, if I look attractive, like if I look as though I'm trying to look attractive, let me put it that way. Like, I mean, if I look attractive at all, people are going to have sexual thoughts about me. And if you know, if I'm trying to be attractive, they will think that they are sort of allowed to. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Is that, like, people have this conception of, like, oh, you know, that girl's really hot, but, like, she's, you know, she's normal. So, like, I have some, you know, desire to, I don't know. I guess it's just, like, you don't feel as though you just could fuck that girl, you know? Like, oh, that girl wants like that girl wants to be seen as attractive because she is looking to attract someone who you know she can have sex with and like it might not be that she would just take anybody or is interested in you you know but like that you know she's hoping that somebody who finds her attractive um and who she also finds attractive will reach out to her on the basis of her attractiveness i don't want that to happen you know, I don't want somebody to reach out to me on the basis of, hey, you look good. I want to fuck, you know, like I would prefer to have an aesthetic that signaled, you know, that like, you know, signaled things about my personality. And, uh, you know, I would want to look cute and good, like aesthetically pleasing, but not, you know, sexually attractive, you know. So, like, in in light of that, like, I do like some of the cute clothes and, you know, some of the stuff that, like, like, you know, a lot of the anime characters that I'm a fan of, like, uh, like a fan of their clothes specifically are just, like, super skinny, cute girls who just wear, you know, outfits that I like. You know, it's, it's more about the outfits than the girls themselves are, like, having nice bodies in the first place. So I do like that kind of stuff. But, like you know, for, for me, maybe if I, you know, if I do get to my target weight, I might wear stuff that's more like what this character in the game is wearing, you know, like this is something that's like, okay, she's got a sleeveless jacket, you know, uh, layers, 
and jeans. I probably wouldn't wear the jeans. Um, I would probably wear, you know, probably honestly like a skirt or something, but like maybe, uh, maybe just like more flowing pants or like even if they were going to be jeans, maybe like bell bottom jeans or something. But like the sleeveless jacket and shirt combo, I definitely would wear, but like I would want to be about the same size as this character, uh, to wear this outfit. Whereas like, you know, the way that I look now, I would prefer to wear something not sleeveless because I would not want to show my arms because I would probably feel insecure. Um, is that bad? Is that bad uh, that I would feel insecure about my arms? Possibly. Maybe I shouldn't. Um, but at the same time, I don't have to because I can just wear clothes that don't show my arms, you know? Um, and... I also like the idea of, you know, wearing more and therefore being, like, more comforted by it, more secure, just generally feeling, you know, uh, like, I want to wear clothes that are inviting, but, like, I don't want my body to be the invitation, you know what I mean? It's like, I want you to feel like I'm approachable and cute, but not because I want to have sex with you, um, you know. I'm approachable and cute because I want to be friendly and, you know, nice and, uh, respectable. So, yeah. Uh, so, more of the clothes I've been buying have been more stuff in the line of dresses, skirts, uh, you know, cardigans. I really want to wear, like, like, I really like the idea of, like, wearing, um just like those really light flowy like uh almost like cardigans but l that are just like a like a shawl almost you know like i like the idea of just having like a shawl or a shroud some kind of just flowy fabric that follows around me you know i've been big into sort of seeing myself as like a hippie witch you know, somewhere between the witch aesthetic and the hippie aesthetic, some kind of soft goth or pastel goth, elements of all that. So, like, and I still want to preserve the, the cluster punk idea as well. Like, cluster punk is, if anything, easier to accomplish with women's clothes because, like, part of my anger and jealousy towards men's, uh, you know, yeah, my, my anger towards men's clothes and jealousy for women's clothes is partially out of the fact that it's easier to achieve cluster punk with women's clothes. Like, there is way more experimental shit that you can wear. Way more weird, interesting, kooky, bizarre color combinations. Like, men's clothes is just boring, and women's clothes is not. So, oh. I didn't even realize that magnifying glass would make me small. So yeah, I'd say that's an effective answer to that question. Um, and it didn't take quite as long as the first time, and it was probably better than the first time. Glad I found the energy to answer it again. All right, this next question comes from D. Hi, Digi. Long time follower. First time contacting you. Sorry if you already responded to a similar comment. I'm really liking these podcasts, but they come out a little faster than I'm able to make time for them. I guess I'd like to see... Uh, or like to ask what advice would give you you would give me so I can start really looking at myself see the kind of person I am inside that kind of stuff you seem really good at understanding people but I've always had trouble understanding anyone including myself I've never had a strong sense of identity and I wouldn't be able to describe how my personality is I usually don't care too much about this but since I realized that I'm probably not cis and started questioning my gender it feels like a necessity I've always kind of wanted to be a girl both biologically and socially even though these thoughts were never really serious until about a year ago when I realized I actually could be one. However, saying that I'm a girl feels like a lie. I don't really feel like I'm male or female in the first place. I'm not even sure whatever that means, but unlike you, I feel like the person I currently am is more similar to other men than to other women, and I find it harder to relate to women as well. It could just be the result of 20 years of being treated as male and lacking interaction with girls my age in a positive female maternal figure, but it makes me feel like I could never be a normal girl and that bums me out. I've been presenting female on the internet, but when my friends call me she sometimes I cringe at myself for trying to go outside my assigned gender role, so that didn't help figuring things out. 
I'm worrying whether this might mean that I'm really a man or it's just imposter syndrome. So I figured if I could look at myself with the depth of people like you do, that I could figure this mess out. Although I don't want to learn this skill just for the gender stuff, but it's what's been on my mind the most lately. <laughs> it definitely sounds to me like a case of imposter syndrome because like the fact that you were having even strong enough thoughts to like, you know, like act as a woman in your interactions online. Um, you know, it seems like it was pretty important as something for you to explore. Not to say that, like, you couldn't explore that and then come to the conclusion that you are, in fact, still a guy. But, like, for me, growing up, like, I looked like a girl. People accused me of being a girl. I didn't understand why beyond the long hair. I didn't think that any of my other actions were necessarily effeminate because I did not talk to girls. I had very little female contact. My mom does not act the same way as other girls. And even though she was a huge role model for me, she was not interested in anything feminine, you know, and like she had kind of been an outcast among girls. I think she just had more negative female social interactions than positive. And I think most of her friends were guys growing up, you know, so like for me, you know, I did not have any real, like, sense of, like, okay, here's how women behave versus here's how men behave. Um, I just, in retrospect, like, looking at my behavior now that I do understand women, see how, if not a more feminine experience, at the very least, it was not a very masculine experience, you know? Like, uh, I just, nothing that... I never, I had a really difficult time relating to boys and most of the boys that I did end up being friends with, as I've said before, turned out to be gay or trans in the long run. Um, so it's really hard for me to even say that like I connected with anybody. Like I didn't, I didn't connect with girls cause I avoided them. I didn't connect with boys because I, you know, like the only boys I could connect with were other outsiders who were on the, you know, some, who were some form of LGBT as well, you know, who had the same interests I did because we are all looking for the same things out of it, you know? So like, to me, like the fact that you are enough of a fan of my content to watch befriending the internet is like a, a pretty big flag in and of itself that like gender identity questions are probably something that you've dealt with. Uh, but how do you figure out where questions begin and end and where actual gender performance, you know, arises? Like, I mean, ultimately, if you feel like you want to be seen as a girl, just have people start calling you a girl. Like, don't change any of your behaviors. Don't change your, uh, you know, your, uh, you know, you don't have to go on HRT if you think that you're a woman. If you think that you would be most satisfied being recognized as a woman, then you should encourage the people around you to, you know, address you in the way that it makes you the happiest to be recognized. And, you know, for me, at least, the more people address me as a woman, the more confident I feel about it and the more I am capable of performing the set of emotions that I had been sort of repressing in order to feel more masculine, you know, like whatever set of inclinations or, you know, natural emotional responses that I would suppress. And it's not that I don't suppress anything anymore, but there's a difference. And I, I thought about making a, a separate point of about this, but I'll just talk about it here about uh, repression versus suppression. And I think that I am somebody who in my, you know, I, I don't know what I may have repressed. Like, you know, if there's something that I have repressed still, then I won't find out, you know, until I, until I stop repressing it, you know, like, um, but suppression is when you know that something is true about you, but you are deliberately ignoring it. You, you are suppressing it. You are trying to pretend that it is not the case. Um, and s when you suppress something for long enough, it can eventually become repression. And so that I think that for me, there are a lot of habits that I used to just indulge in when I was younger because I did not consider them gendered habits. But once I 
was shamed out of them and some some you know some habits you deserve to be shamed out of as they are socially unacceptable or just you're just a fucking annoying you know which in my case i can be very fucking annoying you know so like i've learned how what of my habits are like ob- autistic and obnoxious and should not you know should be avoided but like you know that is something i had to learn well yes like you you might be feeling as though like oh i you know i want i i'm not sure if i want to be a man or a woman and like i feel as though i've always wanted to be a woman but i don't necessarily know if i like truly behave like one or if i would feel better changing gender it's just like start living your life as though you were a woman like your conception of whatever whatever you think it would be different Whatever you think would be different if you were to be identified as a woman instead of a man, just do that and see how that makes you feel. Because that's that's sort of the approach I've been taking is like, again, like whatever it is that I was suppressing, don't suppress it. Just let it happen. Just let it come out of you, you know? And the more I've done that, the more I have felt, you know, in touch with myself and in touch with my gender because i feel like you know these these performances that that i at least register as feminine are closer to my natural state you know more representative of how i feel inside and you know um they are you know traits that are just you know, not just that they're considered, it's not the fact that they're considered feminine by society that makes me able to justify considering myself a woman. It's just the fact that that's how I want to be seen. That like, that's what, that's what makes me happy. That's what I think makes it easiest to communicate with me. That's what makes me feel in tune with my intentions. And like, people being able to refer to me that way is how I know that I can sort of trust them to some degree. That like, You know, these people care enough about me to recognize that regardless of what I happen to look like, um, this is how I feel and this is how I want to be seen, you know? And that can be a a powerful feeling to get that that vibe off of somebody, you know? Like, yeah, this person's acknowledging my needs, so, you know, they respect me, therefore we can be friends. Um... So yeah, I guess that's the best advice that I can manage based on my experiences so far. Uh, King Deme or King Dem says, have you ever considered that maybe weed could be causing a hormonal imbalance in your brain and you don't even realize? Not saying that it is the case, but given that you are constantly under the effects of marijuana, maybe it is affecting you at least at a level you don't realize. To which For the Lemon responds, that's not a thing, ah ha ha. Yeah, I mean, it's not a thing. But funnily enough, I sometimes feel like more masculine and more lexical when I'm high. I shouldn't even say more masculine because like, I've just associated lexicality with masculinity for a long time because it is the means by which I have approached masculinity that like shutting out my emotions and relying on logic is how I avoided my feminine thoughts. I am a woman, no matter what kind of mode of thought I'm in, be it more impressionistic or lexical, it's still me. It's still my feelings as a woman. Um, but like, you know, uh, nonetheless, when I am high, um, I am less reliant on my emotions and my moods as a way of getting through the day and more reliant on thinking, more reliant on translating what I am looking at and interpreting it. And that's why, in my opinion, my analysis got much better after I started smoking because it was like I legitimately could interpret things more it was like like when i normally watch something 
like it's I strain to pay attention to everything at once and simultaneously think of words to describe what I'm seeing. It's like the thinking distracts me from continuing to pay attention and trying to do both at once is hard. When I'm high, it's not a struggle to do both of those things at the same time. So I can interpret things much more quickly and more robustly. And through doing that when I was high, I learned better how to do it when sober like i figured out it's like you know applying the mindset that i had when i was high to just watching things in general um you know got me to a sort of level of understanding where i no longer needed the drug to replicate the effect uh now i smoke sour to deal with the paranoia that they charge by the hour as uh killer mike said you know i yeah just i'm paranoid as shit and um dealing with lots of trauma and trying to, you know, recover mentally and, and, uh, you know, assess who I want to be and fucking, you know, finally admit lots of things to myself that I've been holding back for a long time. So, uh, yeah, I've spoken a lot of weed right now, but, um, you know, I take breaks and when I take those breaks, I feel even more sensitive and uh emotional and effeminate and you know more similar to how i did before i became a workaholic which is what i did uh yeah i became more of a workaholic when i started smoking um it really depends on the weed of course like if i smoke sativas it's more, like I, I should say that when i smoke like hardcore indicas i actually become even more emotional i become like real new type mode like the last two batches of weed that i got I definitely was not doing very much work because I was in an extremely emotional mindset, which was good. It was very cathartic and, and enjoyable to experience that level of emotion, but it was not good for getting stuff done. The weed I'm on right now, which is definitely a sativa, is the opposite. It's like, get shit done weed, let's record videos all fucking day, let's make a deluge, you know. Um, Anyway, yeah, I thought this would be a funny comment to, like, give a sincere answer to, even though it's not really a very sincere comment in the first place, I don't think. But, uh, you know, here on the DigiNay Show, we always try to be sincere as much as we can. This game has really nice music and an interesting atmosphere. It's kind of like a Metroidvania exploration game. There's no combat, so it's just like, I guess there's kind of a puzzle element to it in that you have to like find your way around and there's a lot of fucking Lost Woods shit, like this shit that's going on right now. Um, but, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty cute. I like the girl, I like her blue hair. She kind of looks like Alan B. Beardsley from G Gundam. Um, who is absolutely waifu tier. I think I forgot to put her on my list of characters that I would want to be romantically involved with in my video about that. But she would absolutely be on that list, my friend do 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 because Alan B is god tier. Uh, and I guess this girl would be on the list too, because she cute. I'm going to split this into multiple episodes, even though I'm still answering questions from parts one, two, three, and four, because of the fact that I, I have not been limiting myself to just answering questions on the previous episode. Every single time I've, I've I read all the comments now, um, you know, I've gone back to the state of life of reading all comments. So, uh, you know, there are questions here from every episode. There's no real sense in like waiting, like, like, like making sure I cover every single question before I post any of them. Um, so, you know, this one will happen and then there'll be another one with even more of the questions from the first four episodes. And then there'll be another one with even more of the questions from the first four episodes until I, uh, am sick of those questions. But, uh, you know, I have to take my breaks so I can smoke my weed and, um, eat my snacks and this is one of those breaks and also switch games because this one fun as it is uh getting a little bit tedious